This video essay will explore the film 500 Days of Summer through the lens of feminism, specifically examining the concepts of the male gaze, objectification, and scopophilia. Before we discuss the male gaze, I want to briefly introduce feminism to provide some context. It's reductive to try to sum it up in one sentence, but essentially, feminism is a range of movements and ideologies that advocate social, economic, and political equality of the sexes. Although classifying feminism into groups has proved divisive, historically it has broadly been divided into four waves. The first of these waves was dominant in the late 19th and early 20th century, and focused mainly on legal inequalities, like achieving voting rights for women. Second wave feminists, coalescing in the 1960s, were concerned more with de facto gender inequalities in society, like workplace injustice, traditional gender roles in the home, reproductive rights and sexual harassment. It is of this period that feminist film theory was spawned, as feminists analysed how women were portrayed in films. One such theorist was Laura Mulvey, who coined the term male gaze in her seminal essay, Visual Pleasure in Narrative Cinema, to describe a tendency in Hollywood cinema, in particular, where female characters are presented through the gaze of the male cinematographer and male protagonist. In these films, the audience watches an objectified female character that exists solely for the pleasure and character development of the male. Films that I loved, films that had moved me, I was suddenly watching with different eyes. Instead of being absorbed into the screen, into the story, into the mise-en-scene and the beauty of the cinema, I was irritated. Focusing on the films of Albert Hitchcock, especially Rear Window, she suggested that through the perspective of male characters as well as men behind the camera, the audience can become complicit in this objectification. These three groups of spectators thus engage in scopophilia. They derive pleasure from looking at something, the woman, who in these films has no other purpose and whose perspective isn't shown. Mulvey's theory doesn't only apply to sexual objectification. Female characters under this male gaze are often presented as emotional instruments whose sole purpose is to develop the male character, a sort of intellectual objectification. Undoubtedly, characters developing other characters is an important part of storytelling. This is the purpose of a supporting character. However, it becomes problematic when this is the only dimension to a female character. When her life is non-existent outside of the male protagonist and his troubles, this helps perpetuate the archaic societal view of women as passive figures. Consequently, Although this form of objectification is less obvious, it is just as harmful. In Mulvey's words, we are presented with a silent image of woman as bearer of meaning, not maker of meaning. The film 500 Days of Summer is interesting, as the female character Summer Finn is presented to us solely through the biased perspective of the male protagonist Tom, yet, at the same time, the film is a critique of the male gaze. Despite this initial shot of a seemingly happily married couple, the opening narration This is a story of boy meets girl. You should know up front, this is not a love story. Hints early on that this film is not a traditional romantic comedy. The film centres around Tom, who works a dissatisfying job as a greeting card writer, having given up his ambitions as an architect. When a new woman begins working at his office, Summer, Tom finds himself almost instantly infatuated after seeing her and then discovering that she likes the Smiths just like him. They soon enter a relationship, however, they both have different feelings towards each other and want different things. As a result, Summer ends their relationship, leaving Tom bitter and confused. The film opens with a neutral narrator that gives equal consideration to Tom and Summer as it gives them backstory. It is in this narration that we receive what is almost a disclaimer about the protagonist. The boy, Tom Hansen of Margate, New Jersey, grew up believing that he'd never truly be happy until the day he met the one. This belief stemmed from early exposure to sad British pop music and a total misreading of the movie, The Graduate. We are being warned that Tom bases his view of women and relationships on fantasy. The story is soon told entirely from Tom's perspective, signalling Laura Mulvey's male gaze. However, crucially, the preface makes us understand that this is an unreliable and flawed perspective. His objectification of Summer is apparent in a montage in which we are shown close-ups of what he likes about Summer, largely physical qualities. Even when he talks about her non-physical traits, they are largely superficial like her apparently quirky taste in music. No, I am not joking around. Octopus's Garden. Yes, Octopus's Garden is the best Beatles song ever recorded. Why don't you just say piggies? Come on, I love Ringo Starr. His behavior is a classic example of what Mulvey describes as a male gaze that projects its fantasy onto a female figure. In this telling conversation, his more mature 12 year old sister points out his childish view of women and love. Just cause some cute girl likes the same bizarro crap you do? That doesn't make her your soulmate, Tom. Although we don't know much about Summer, largely because Tom doesn't, the bar scene provides us with an insight into her character. She doesn't believe in love and doesn't want a serious relationship, the complete opposite of Tom. I just don't 
feel comfortable being anyone's girlfriend. They don't actually feel comfortable being anyone's anything, you know. This distinguishes her from other female characters subject to the male gaze, who exists solely to fulfill the man's desires. Even though she makes her wishes clear, Tom apparently ignores this as it doesn't conform to his fantasy about her. The film cleverly contrasts Tom's initial rose-coloured view of the relationship with his re-examination of events after they break up. This gives us an insight into Summer's perspective. With time, Tom realises that her experience of the relationship differed to his, and, clouded by fantasy, he completely failed to see this. The film shows us throughout that Tom lives in a sort of fantasy world. In this way, we distrust Tom's telling of events and understand his flaw. This is what sets the story apart from many others told through a male gaze. It critiques his behaviour and pulls back the curtain of fantasy to reveal a reality in which Summer is not Tom's object, but has her own aspirations and path in life. Importantly, the film doesn't end with Tom and Summer together, they go their separate ways. The cryptic shot we were introduced to at the beginning of the film is shown to us again at the end. However, this time we are given the context to understand that they don't end up together. Rather, Summer gets married to someone else that she feels certain that she loves. Tom, having matured through the experience, respects this, accepts that he needs to move on, and does so. Summer. I really do hope that you're happy. Yes, Summer is a device used in the film to develop Tom's character. Importantly, she exists outside the male character and follows her own trajectory too. Films often tell a story through the highly subjective gaze of the protagonist, be it male or female, and the immersiveness related to this is part of the art form's power. Experiencing the perspective of a flawed protagonist can be effective. However, there is a way to do it right, and I think 500 Days of Summer is a good example of this. A film should make us realise the error of characters that objectify or fantasise about the same or opposite sex, instead of encouraging us to participate and continue the trend of reductive gender representation in cinema.